Ah, third and fourth grade. Here we are, finally. I am going to try to teach you a lesson on what I would like you to do for your reading review from the chapter book that you read um, in March. Okay, first things first. This is not going to be a short get it done in a day assignment. So I need you to go into it with that mindset. This is not a quick assignment. We're going to be working on it for the next three weeks minimum, maybe longer. Okay, today we are going to work on paragraph one. Yes, your first paragraph and that's it. That's what I want to work on today. And this week is our first paragraph, okay? Now your first paragraph of your reading review should include, uh, your opening paragraph should include something to catch the reader's attention. And I'll give you a couple ideas for things that you can do with that. And then you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. Yep, you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. Um, your paragraph will include the book title and the author for sure. It might have a very vague or brief um, introduction of the characters in the setting. Uh, just a hint of it. It might have a hint of the plot or the conflict because you want the person who's reading your review to keep reading. So that's important, uh, but it doesn't give any main details. So that's one of the things to think about in this opening paragraph. You are not giving any real significant details from your story. You're just giving very general information. Okay. All right. The second thing is I think attached to this, I gave you three sheets of paper. That is not at all, I don't know what I was thinking. That is not going to be even close to enough pieces of paper for what we're going to need for this project. So maybe what you might want to do if you have some loose leaf paper, grab uh, a few sheets of that. Otherwise, um, start with a notebook, okay? You can do uh, any old notebook, just go to a spot and then this is going to be where you're going to start your writing. And one of the things that we have to remember is that writing is like a, a living, breathing thing. And, and we can make changes to it and make it better. And that's what's important for me here for you working through this process is not just thinking, okay, I wrote it, I'm all done, but to look back, review it yourself, and then also take the suggestions that I give, or we might share it with um, your classmates too, and that your classmates give to you so that you make it be a good essay by the time we're all finished, okay? So you're not daunted and afraid, are you? No, we are strong writers, all right? So we will go forth. I'm going to cut to the other screen where I'm going to show you some examples, okay? Ready? All right, so first of all, I just am reiterating, and if you wanna write this down on a piece of paper, your reading review, this is our part one, is your opening paragraph. So today we're working on our opening paragraph. So what does that opening paragraph want to include? something to catch the reader's attention, and then tell them what you're going to tell them, but no specific details. You want to include the book title and the author for sure, and very general hint of information of the main characters and of the story. That means the plot or the conflict, okay? So I have two examples that I wrote and I'm going to use when I'm writing my reading review, I'm going to use a book that you're familiar with too. And that is The Toymaker's Apprentice, which is one of the um, most recent book chapter books we read in school, okay? So my first example, oh, I'm gonna leave that covered up here for a minute or you might start reading it. My first example is sometimes a way to catch a reader's attention is to ask them a question. Okay, now the way that I did my paragraph, I asked a, a few questions to get the reader thinking and then I did an opening paragraph right after that. You could ask just one question and then go into your opening paragraph right from that. So don't feel like you have to do exactly what I am writing here. I'm just trying to give you some examples and some ideas, okay? And let me tell you, this is not easy. Um, I rewrote my things already that I wanted to show to you five or six times already. Yes, I rewrote them five or six times and I still would make changes to them, I know already. So let me show you example one. So 
on the top of my page. When I'm all finished, I'm going to have reading review, my name and the date, okay? So if you'll put this on the top and then you do not have to write example one. I'm just giving you two different examples. So I wanted to have this listed for myself. I'll read it to you and I hope maybe you can see um, what's written there as well. Have you had a time in your life when it seemed everything was going wrong? Has it ever seemed that no matter what you do, you can't do anything right? Have you ever felt alone? Even though you're surrounded by others, you feel so very alone. So there's my questions. I'm getting the person to think. Have you ever felt this way? And I think almost all of us would be able to say yes to every single one of those questions. And then I continue on with my opening paragraph. These are some of the feelings the main character, Stefan Drosselmeyer, felt in the story, The Toymaker's Apprentice by Sherry L. Smith. So you see, I gave a character's name. I told the title of the story and who the author is. And then I continue on. In fact, many of the key characters felt this way. Stefan, his father, his cousin Christian, Samir, Ernst, and especially Stefan's nemesis, the Mouse King. The author took the idea of an old but familiar tale, The Nutcracker by Alexander Dumas, new and amazing scenes that are fantasy, but engage the reader in such a way to make it all seem real. Ah, as I'm reading that, do you notice my sentence didn't make sense? The author took the idea of an old but familiar tale, The Nutcracker by Alexander Dumas, and added, so I have to put in here, and added, new and amazing scenes that are fantasy, but that engage, I like the word that there, we could probably have it just by itself, but that engage the reader in such a way to make it all seem real. The struggles and trials of feeling alone, battling feelings of fear and sadness and betrayal, and the realization that we each have natural, though perhaps hidden, gifts. And that sentence needs a little bit more too, doesn't it? The struggles and trials of feeling alone, battling feelings of fear, sadness, and betrayal, and the realization that we each have natural, though perhaps hidden gifts, are key elements of this story. Learning that by working together, you can accomplish great things. All of these concepts and more are woven throughout this story. This is a story of struggle. This is a story of victory. This is a story of love. All right, so on this one, you're going to say, Mrs. Stolt, it's like you wrote the whole thing already. Ah, but I, this is just the beginning. So this one here, what are the three things that I would be talking about then? I would be talking about the struggles, okay? So I'm gonna kind of put this together. So in my following paragraphs, this would be one of the things I'm going to focus on, the struggles and trials of feeling alone. I'm going to focus on battling feelings of fear, sadness, and betrayal, and that um, using our hidden gifts, and by working together. So these I'm gonna kind of put together in my paragraphs. So I'm not saying that you write your paragraph and say, I'm going to tell you about, you don't necessarily start your sentence that way, but within my paragraph, I have the three things that I'm going to talk about afterwards, okay? Now you noticed how when I read this again, and I read this before I even started to teach this lesson again, I found things and as soon as I found it, I made a correction. I made a mark, and here I used a pen, but you could use just your pencil as you're writing. Just come back in, and when you see something, here I kind of wrote something off to the side. Here I wrote words right on top of it. Make those corrections as you're going through. And don't worry about having this be this perfect, pristine, copy. You do not have to rewrite it. Make those corrections. Uh, if I had a word that I didn't like, I would cross it out. Okay. That's what you will send me a copy of um, sometime this week of your opening paragraph. Okay. So that was example one. Let me give you another example. Here's example two. Same 
premises, I'm going to do an opening paragraph. I'm going to make sure that I try to do something to catch the reader's attention. And then I'm going to tell them what I'm going to tell them. And I'm going to include the book title, the author, uh, maybe a hint about the characters in the setting and the conflict or the plot that's happening. Okay, so here we go. Example two for my reading review, my name and the date. So I do want you to have this on the top of your page, your name and today's date, the date that you're writing. I thoroughly enjoyed reading the book, The Toymaker's Apprentice by Sherry L. Lewis. The characters, human or animal, all had human characteristics. Oh, I really don't like how that sounds because a human is going to have a human characteristic. I'm just going to make a little question mark there and come back to that. All right, let's keep going. The author showed how the characters grew and changed throughout the story. Through struggles and triumphs, each character exhibited their strengths. The author showed that by each character using their natural abilities, they were best successful as they worked together with others. Mm, I don't think I like the word best there. They were most maybe as they worked together with others. In The Toymaker's Apprentice, real life and fantasy are intertwined. Characters grow and change to overcome unbelievable odds and in the end, the love of family and friends brings triumph. So on this one, yes, a little shorter than uh, the first example that I showed you. Oops, I should have moved that up a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, here are the three things that I'm going to bring into my essay then as we continue on. Um, characters grow and change is the first one. Uh, they overcome unbelievable odds. And the love of family and friends brings triumph in the end. Okay, so those are, I'm going to have a paragraph kind of, or how I write about it is going to make sure I include those concepts when I'm writing the rest of my essay. Okay, I'm cutting back to me. Hi. All right. Don't break your pencil in frustration or throw it across the room. Just take a deep breath. Think about what you already know about your story. Think about what you liked best about it. What was an interesting or exciting feeling that you had as you were reading it? What was something that was maybe the key um, concept or the key thought, the key feeling that the author wanted you to walk away with once you were done reading that story? What did they have you thinking about as you were reading? Jot down some ideas on a slip of paper and maybe you already have those. Remember how I asked you to make sure that you compile uh, some of the character information and you had um, written down either on sticky notes or little slips of paper, important things that were happening as your stories progressed. Relook at those. Okay, and then start your opening paragraph. And it's okay if we make mistakes. Okay, this is a learning process. I want to see words that you might cross out or even a whole line. Just keep working. Don't toss your paper away and start over unless every single line got crossed out, I guess. <laughs> okay, certainly capitalize uh, the beginning of sentences and put your end marks um, right neatly. That will be important for me be, to be able to see this as your parents send me a copy of what you're writing. Um, in the end, we may try to put it on the type our, on our Google Classroom and do typing, but right now I just, I'm not quite sure that you're up to typing this much, okay? And I think that will be a struggle more than just trying to get your thoughts down. And that's really what I want you to do. I want you to focus on getting your thoughts down about this book that you enjoyed reading. And you're going to tell others about what you enjoyed about it, uh, what was important about it, okay? So think about that. Put yourself into this opening paragraph. Okay, now um, don't get freaked out either. I realize example one was really long. You can just do one question, like for example, have you ever felt completely and utterly alone? 
and then go into, well, that's how the key character in The Toymaker's Apprentice by Sherry L. Lewis felt. Uh, so you don't have to have it as long and wordy, perhaps, as Mrs. Stolt had, all right? Um, do your best, and we'll work through it together. So again, this week, all that I'm looking at is trying to have you write um, an opening paragraph, that opening paragraph. And at any time, if you would like write it today, um, send me a copy of it and let me give you some suggestions and, and work on it as well so that we can get it all fixed up. I'd like to get our opening paragraph set and ready to go because it's from that that we know what three things that we're going to be uh, writing about from here. So kind of thinking about those other things that you're going to be telling about um, in you, the rest of your writing too has to be kind of part of this as well. Maybe you're going to be telling about a specific scene or um, how characters change, okay? And those are things that you write about in that opening paragraph. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call and uh, just give it a try. Don't freak out about it, just write. Just write and we'll take care of the rest, okay? Thanks and have a great day.